Our Please special guest that. today is the great Jake Toulson, former BYU basketball standout who is in the Cougar Council Room and ready to talk Cougar hoops. Man, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let's talk about the hair from then and now. What do you think? You know, I mean... Longer now. Yeah, it's longer. You know, not, not playing ball anymore. I actually just got a haircut. It was, like, pretty long, but... Um, you know, this is me. You didn't feel pressure to post basketball. You didn't feel pressure to be on BYU TV with a shorter haircut. No, I, I I knew that I was coming on today. And I, was like, I got to get a fresh cut. Got to make sure I'm looking good. <laughs> but these guys, you know, you look great. Let's go. You. This yeah. is professional, Jake. This, this is, is professional. Yeah, this is. Before he was uh, amateur, Jake, because <laughs> yeah. he was a college basketball player pre NIL. Okay, yeah. BYU's in the Big Twelve. They're uh, five and five. They're in eighth place. Yeah. I never knew that five and five and and eighth place could feel so good yeah but it's how it is in the big 12 how have you assessed what BYU has done so far I mean let's let's just say they have overachieved I think um and everyone had a lot of expectations of what was going to happen in the big 12 um and they have answered every question I think they're playing tough they're playing their brand of basketball um everyone would say you know how's BYU going to adjust to the big 12 but I've seen a lot of adjusting to BYU. Like BYU came into the conference and teams got to come to the Marriott Center and play us and play our brand. Um, and it's been great. I'm, I'm very impressed with what I see so far. Yeah, the rhetoric coming out of non-conference play was very interesting, even from BYU fans. It's like, okay, 12-1 and one is great. And I know they got the win against San Diego State. And yeah, they beat NC State, but they lost to Utah. Yeah. Let's see what happens when the Big 12 teams yeah. come rolling. And they lost to Cincinnati. And I was like, see, I told you they couldn't they handle the Big Tiger. 12. Yeah. They're now five, five and five. Yeah. I feel like everything they did in non-con up to this point now with the 10 Big 12 games, they've been validated. Absolutely. Is it safe to say that? Absolutely. And I said they overachieved and when they're five and five, and that's crazy to say. But yeah. um, it's hard to win in this conference. These teams are good. Um, it's, not, it's not easy to win on any given night, whether that's at home or on the road. You saw it with Cincinnati. And then we go out and get one on the road that you know maybe people thought that we didn't. Um, so... Uh, the team has 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 answered every question. Um, they keep playing hard, and Coach Pope has these guys bought in, and it's been great. Okay, BYU is playing its first team for a second time tonight. What's the challenge of playing a team twice, having a game, but kind of evolving both teams since then, and now it's round two? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always tough to beat a team twice. Uh, I think. Um, we're at home now, so it's, it's a little bit of a different game because um, we can use some of these things to our advantage. But um, I think what, what Coach Pope is saying to the guys is that we got to be who we are. Um, you know, obviously there's different adjustments, things that you can learn from the first matchup. But if I had to guess, he's saying something like tonight, you know, we got to take care of the ball, we got to rebound, and we got to play for each other. Um, and those are things that you can control. And... Um, you know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. If you do those three things, you give yourself a chance to win. Jake, I know you're a competitor, and I know that somewhere in that wonderful mind of yours, you have thought, how would my team, my senior year, have fared in Big 12 play? How do you think your squad with you and TJ and Yoli and Zach Selyus and company have fared against the Big 12 style of competition? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. Like, you know, it's, it's hypothetical. But um, we had some, you know, games that year where we could – look at it and say, well, we, you know, we went on the road and beat a, a, a really good Houston team. Um, you know. uh, yeah, you beat a Big 12 team. Yeah, you so, played so, Kansas. Yeah, exactly. We played Hawaii. Kansas out in Maui. We, yep, without Yoli. Without Yoli. Yep. Um, yeah, so a lot of those games you can look at and be like, you know, that team would have um, been able to contend in the Big 12. And I think, uh, you know, that was, I think the year before or during that year is when we kind of announced what, what was going to happen with, WCC and Big 12. Um, so it's fun to actually be here where, you know, we're playing in the Big 12. I was at the Texas game when, you know, it's just crazy. Like, you grow up coming to the Marriott Center, playing in the Marriott Center, and then you see Texas, that brand, the burnt orange. I know that they're leaving, but um, it's cool. I think BYU is, you know, in a great position to, to get everything they want. And then blow them out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. then crush them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun, awesome. man. I knew this team was going to be good when – when uh, we went down to Vegas and, and made two coaches just have complete meltdowns. <laughs> they just were throwing tantrums, and I was like, this team is good. That's when you knew. They're tough, yeah. It's yeah. because your team that you did that to some opposing hey, coaches. We, 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 we had fun with it. We definitely uh, 
we competed, so it was, yeah. It's so good. seven and three through ten is what your answer is. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, let's let's talk about this group. They don't have a superstar. They probably could if they just gave Jackson Robinson like twenty five shots a game, or yeah. or Dallin Hall, or whoever, yeah. right? But it, it's a great team. Um, nobody's averaging even twelve a game right now. Yeah. Like the the unique nature of this team is that they don't rely on a superstar. They have all these guys. They move the ball a ton. Ali's unique. Foose still that inside presence, like. Have you seen a team like this before? BYU, like you said, teams have had to adjust to BYU as well. Yeah, no, it's 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 fun, and I think it's it's new. Um, not you know, not every BYU team has has played like this, um, and so a lot of credit to Coach Pope for getting these guys to buy into their role. Um, and you see what happens when you 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 know maybe sacrifice a little bit of your numbers and mm. these things that the, these young kids tend to to, to care about. Um, but when you when you buy in, um, you can get everything you want uh, with the team. And so, uh, yeah, teams have had to adjust to it. It's easy to game plan for for a player that's going to put up 20 shots a game and try and you know corral that that one player. But when you've got a team that's running all this action and back cutting and like you just you can't you can't do anything. You just got to pray. <laughs> you got to pray just to make it today, MC Hammer. Um, there are more kind of Zach Selyus and Dalton Nixon types on this team, yeah. I think, than we've had before because it's more of the Richies and and come, everyone has a role yeah. and they understand that role. And sometimes it's hard to buy into that. Like we know that Zach Selyus could have put up 20 a game. BYU. He's doing yeah. it in Germany. Look at him with yeah. the mullet. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Alex Barcelo is like the number five guy on that team. He's one yeah. of the greatest shooters in BYU history. Yeah. But his role was like, oh, I'll take corner threes. I'll play yeah. great defense. You don't need me to score a ton. Just that kind of depends where you're at in your evolution. And this team in year one, Jake of the Big 12, pretty good. And then next year you add the highest profile recruit BYU's ever signed, Colin Chandler, and then you yeah. try to keep it going. No, I. I I, you, you, you said it. I mean, there's, there's guys that are buying in. We know that all these guys are capable and they can go off and, you know, get all the numbers and all the praise, but this team just wants to win, it feels like. Um, and and it, it shows in the way that they're playing, the effort that they're giving, and the level of sacrifice that it, that it takes to get what you want ultimately. So it's, it's great. I Jake, love it. Jake Toulson's with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach Pope calls that balance and that buy-in like one of the team's superpowers. And it really does kind of feel like that. Our good friend Jimmer Fredette sat in that chair a, a few weeks ago and said, my one question with this team steal, uh, still is, if you need a bucket at the end of the game, like who's the alpha? Who, yeah. Who's the guy that goes and gets it? Jackson Robinson took the shot that BYU needed to beat Kansas State. Yeah. Do you pinpoint him as the guy? Like, because your team, you had three different guys. Like, you were one of them. Yeah. TJ was another. Yoli was another. You needed a bucket. Like, one of you three was going to get a bucket. Yeah. Who's that guy for this unique BYU team? I think I think it depends on the situation. Um, I would say Jax because he has that skill set um, and he's not afraid of the moment. Uh, Dallin Hall I could also put in that category where – um, he's comfortable with the ball in his hands, and he's going to make the right play no matter what. Um, and then maybe, you know, there's a matchup where we throw it inside to Foose. Like, it depends on the situation, but, um, you know, Jackson has that, you know, that it factor um, where he wants the ball, he wants to make big shots, and, I mean, he, he's got a really bright future ahead of him. Um, I can't remember the last BYU player that was drafted. Was it Jimmer? It was Trent uh, placed it. No, it was yeah, Jimmer. Jimmer. It was Jimmer. Jimmer. Sorry, Jimmer. Yeah. You're right, Trent, and then Jimmer. And, so, yeah, it's that's been it. 13 yeah. It's been years. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. And it's only two picks in forever. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we're in the Big 12. We're we're winning. We're we're doing everything we want to do. But I don't exposure, know. eyeballs. Yeah, attention. getting getting guys to the NBA is is great for a program, right? Um, so Jackson um, is going to have a lot of opportunities in his future. Okay, NBA would be great. That'd be awesome. If it's not NBA, there are a ton of leagues as, as basketball has evolved and post-Dream Team 30 years later. Like, the world has yeah. uh, a ton of great leagues, as we've learned, right? Yeah. Who else are pro prospects that could be, like, uh, guys that go like yourself and, and uh, Yoli and whatnot? Yeah. And Alex Barcelo still playing and so on and so forth that play somewhere internationally. Who else on this team to you fits that? I mean, anyone that's playing on any given night, they, I mean, they all have a chance. We can go down the line. Um, each each one of these players individually is 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 really good and playing at a really high level. Uh, I think fans don't really see that because they see what this role that that certain player is playing for this team. But you know, 
we saw it with Trev. He made nine threes in a game. And Spencer, you know, can take over any game. And Ali and Foose and Dallin and Richie and, um, you know, even, you know, guys like, like, like Trey Stewart have taken, you know, kind of a back seat in conference play, but ready when his number's called. Like, you don't understand how good these guys are, um, and they'll all have a chance to, to play if that's what they want to do. It's like when Brian Scalabrini showed up at, like, a pickup <laughs> game one time and just put up, like, 50, and everyone's yeah. like, who's like this the guy? worst dude on the yes. Celtics? It's like, these guys are amazing. No, these like, guys, get these, out of here. These players are so good. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, I want to put out, you know, one bold take here. I think Dallin has a has a real legit chance to be special. Like, I agree. Love it. Love it. He he he's gonna have a chance. He reminds me a lot of Matthew Dellavedova. I mm. think he could like a more likable version. A more likable version. <laughs> a more handsome version too, for sure. Minus the mouth guard and yeah. the elbow pads. In and the, yeah. I'm like, are you? But he's playing got that toughness. Toughness yeah, makes every play. right play. Makes big shots. I mean, yeah. he's only a sophomore. He's he's just gonna keep getting he's better. He's so young. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think we feel like he's a junior. It's like, no, no, no. This dude has, like, two and a half more years. He's, we got, yeah. we got time, man. Yeah. Jake, it's been it. great to catch up with you, man. You guys are awesome. Okay, final question. BYU goes 2-0 and this week. Yeah. They get to 7-5. and Yeah. Do they finish above 500 in the league? Uh, I think if they do, they give themselves a great chance. But um, having played for Coach Pope, I know that he's just going to say, we're just focused on one game at a time. We didn't so. ask Coach Pope. We asked you, Jake. <laughs> Listen, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Coach mode still. Let's go. Good to see you, man. Yeah, thanks great. for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me.